Uh, shout out to the Boston Red Sox for the absolute least necessary moval of time to start a game in the history of baseball. Uh, this game was slated to start at 7 tonight, and they moved it up to 6.30. Did they? <laughs> Thank you. I didn't know that. I, I didn't know that at all. Um, that's interesting. Like, they what, did it. Uh, they, why did, did, did they give a reason? Yeah, the Celtics were going to win the finals tonight, so that's why they did it. They didn't. They want as many people to watch Aaron Judge and Juan Soto tee off at Fenway Park <laughs> right before right before the Celtics come on. And I think the real reason is like the the Celtics have been doing watch parties at the Garden. Mm-hmm. They just don't want the traffic to get in the way, like the Red Sox traffic to get in the way. That's all it is. Okay. That's fair. There's no um, way they think like, which to be fair, like the game starts at 840. If it was a 630 game starts, baseball can finish that quickly. If he and Bale are both uh, working quick, like it could be over. You could see the whole thing theoretically, but it was just very funny. Like the, the other night, uh, what was it, game three and the Tom Brady retirement were happening while the Red Sox were actually beating the Phillies, and it was just like they were a distant third in terms of what people were paying attention to. Like, it was a finals game, obviously. No one's going to chirp them for that. And then a non-game, like, had 60,000 right. people at it. All right. And I'm assuming that was at Gillette? Oh, yeah. yeah. Sold out. <laughs> Absolutely banged out. And and Jay Z performed, which irritated the fuck out of me. But whatever. Yeah, I can see that. Um, that was Brady's walkout or runout song. Like every game, uh, the Black Album came out after Brady's career started, so it, it definitely wasn't for his full career. But the majority of his career, he ran out. Uh, public service announcement, and uh, yeah, that was that video of him performing was so goddamn funny because. Obviously, it was taken from, like, the rich people's seats, like, right next to the stage. Yeah. So people aren't even, like, paying attention. Yeah, I was bro, like, this. It, it might as well have been me performing. Like, if, if you just look at the video, it might as well have been me. Like, nobody was looking at the stage. Nobody was paying attention. Nobody was vibe. Nothing. It was just Jay-Z just rapping his heart out, and nobody is paying a lick of attention. To and be I, fair, though, the camera did eventually turn around, and you saw it tens of thousands of people and it's like mm, all right i know those people appreciate this but every other other than the former players who are sitting up there no one no clearly one gives a shit that. you couldn't even see jay-z for like the first 12 bars he was just in a cloud of smoke like he couldn't <laughs> <laughs> he, he was just like this is not the amount bro, of i, I turned the I video off because it was pissing me off bro like i'm just like he's performing and nobody cares bro i can't watch the rest of this shit what is this? I would say like uh, at least fifty eight thousand people cared. It was just the two thousand you could see didn't, yeah, care, they, at they didn't care at all. At all. Like, <laughs> like at is that all. McCordy? Who is that? Who is that up there? Like, <laughs> like bro, if you if you cut the video on and, and you just had it on mute for whatever reason, like there's a decent portion of that beginning of the video that you would never know some a performance is going on because everybody's just standing there like, all right, well. What are we supposed? What are we supposed to do? We don't care. They're about not the- even like necessarily looking up from their conversations either. Like a couple people are just like, "Oh, that's weird." Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> talk market. Like <laughs> about fucking Jay Z. Imagine. Yeah. No. I mean, it was that's another low point. Going on. It's cute. Yeah, it's just another low point uh, for New York sports. Oh, I can't up. remember. Like, it was. It was either Bondi. Gelb, one of the New York writers was like, this is going to be the sixth Boston title in like the last decade. I can't remember the actual number. New York has twice as many teams and we have zero. It's like, buddy, you don't have to stop it the last 10 years. Like we're on the precipice of 13, 13 overall since 2002. Like it's not, it's been a bloodbath. The, 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 the Yankees have won in 09. And that's it, right? Am I missing someone? The Giants. I, I do forget about them quite. <laughs> I bet you do. Uh, <laughs> bet you do. Yeah. So three, but three is the total. Yes. Correct. And every sport has multiple teams. 
Yeah. I mean, except basketball. But. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to disagree, sadly. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Although, shout out the Brooklyn Nets. <clears throat> Truly couldn't have done it without you fucking morons. <laughs> you absolute Bro, they, 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 they should put a banner up. Like, I'm not even joking. They should just put a banner up. Like if the Heat can retire like Dan Marino and Michael Jordan's jerseys, I don't see why the Nets can't celebrate this title that they held. Did he him. have Dan Marino's jersey retired? Yeah. <laughs> They're so good at dick riding, man. Jesus Christ, bro. Like he plays I a believe, sport, bro. I if if it's not more like the Heat don't have many of their own jerseys retired. You know what I mean? Like it's Wade for sure. I'm sure Haslam will be up there. Alonzo. LeBron's not retired yet. Bill Russell's is retired. So they have at least as many, if not more, non-Heat player jerseys retired. And two of them are basketball. Guys who never even considered playing for the Heat. <laughs> the never Michael, crossed their mind. Well, the, the Michael Jordan one is just I, just the most egregious example of doing tricks on it I could ever recall in sports. It was just doing absolute 360 windmills on it for no reason. Like he didn't play for you. He didn't think ever think about playing for you. Like you never. I don't. Why he's not dead? So like, wh why? Why? What is the what is the reason here? No, it, it's it's always been weird. Um, like always, it's right next to the Marino one. That one makes more sense, I guess. But it's not like the Celtics and Bruins have hung up like TB12 in the rafters. You know what I mean? Like, it's just and not they, got way, they got way more reason to do it, too. Like, on top of it, they're just not. Like, Tom Brady gets, like, yo, when he comes to the Garden, he, if he comes to it, I don't know if he's a basketball player. I can't player. remember the last time he's been at the Garden. Right. I know he's done it. But, but yeah, he comes. Let's say he does. He shows up in the front row. He stands up. They cheer him. They move on to the next play. That's it. Yeah, like, that's not supposed time to out be. over. Yeah. That's it. Right. Exactly. That's not supposed to be. We got Dan Marino's number in the fucking rafters for what? He didn't play for y'all, bro. And he ain't win no titles for the city. No. Nah. Respectfully, <laughs> but he won nah. nothing for the city. Right. Yeah. Marino was cold, no doubt. But it's very the Miami Heat. They very much do things their own way, and a lot of it's very funny. A lot of it's very, very, very funny. funny. Very funny. But shout out to the Nets one more time for making this possible. Fucking clowns. Shout out to yeah, them. shout out the Russians. They moved them from uh, New Jer Newark, New Jersey to Brooklyn, New York. They're like, we got to make a splash. Let's trade for 35 and 36-year-old Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett, and we'll compete with the Heat. And they just immediately did not. <laughs> no, it, was never, it was never a good trade. Never competitive. It was a bad trade the minute that shit was consummated, bro. The minute it was, and then everything that happened since just made it look worse. Like everything, <laughs> everything. Disgusting. Shout out, shout out Nets Daily, who somehow watched like Kareem in high school and still tweets with us. I, I'll never understand what's going on there. He was talking so much shit when they got Katie and Kyrie, and it's like, dude, you've seen all every basket. You watched Naismith stitch the first basketball, and you. You just still don't know ball. That's crazy. That's crazy to a guy like me. You watched Naismith stitch the first ball. It's crazy. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. But he's he old said, hang that, peach, hang that peach basket right there. Let me show you something. <laughs> Next day, he said, will do. Uh, so, yeah, that's – I don't know. It's going to be very funny. I don't remember the last time. I think a lot gets talked about, like, the rivalry and it's dead and this, that, and the third – I don't remember the last time it's had this little juice, and it has a lot to do with the first meeting being June fucking 14th. Uh -huh. They play this series. They play the like the 5th of July through the 7th. They play the end of July, and then they don't play again until September, I believe. Like, that's, that's so... They should be playing once a month minimum. Minimum. I don't... First of all, I, I, I liked it more when um, division rivals played each other 19 times. I appreciated that more. I get that. I get why they shifted away from it. Cool. But, like, the scheduling, and I, I will talk about the Yankees-Red Sox portion of it because, well, obviously we're on the Yankees-Red Sox program. But it ain't just us. I see a lot of other people could play on the bird app like, hey, man, why, why, why are we beating our division rivals for the first time in July? Yeah, it doesn't make any fucking sense. You're in the same division. The Yankees, Red Sox, yes, the the juice isn't there because, well, 
Boston stinks. All right, or they're mediocre. Me- all right, right. Yeah. better word to yeah. put it. The Red Sox are not very good, so the juice is not is not really there for it. But if 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 you fucking put the first Yankee Red Sox matchup in, you know, the third week of April, it's easier to it's it's easier to to gather some juice. It's easy because all right, we're we're not out of it yet. Like it, it's not clear we're mediocre yet, right? So it's easy to do that. Have them play once a month in general. I think that's just fair. Have you play your division rivals once a month and be done with it. I have no idea why it's June 14th or we're getting the, the first Yankee Red Sox matchup today. I just don't understand it at all. Uh, you said the Red Sox are mediocre. Do you have any take on why the Red Sox have a better offense than the Yankees? Because the numbers here... The Red Sox have eight players with an OPS of at least 800. That's more than any team in the MLB. Now, that is a shocking statistic to hear. It is shocking numbers to read. Uh, The Yankees do not have this many. You guys play people like Anthony Rizzo and and things like this. Devers is a 928, which would be, I think, third highest on the Yankees. (laughs) Correct. Correct. Rob Ref Snyder, 871. These were all as of yesterday morning, by the way. Uh, Tristan Koss is 857. He does have at least 75 plate appearances, even though he hasn't played in a while. Uh, Tyler O'Neill, 852. That probably went up after he hit that rocket last night. Connor Wong, 839. Willie Abreu, 829. David fucking Hamilton has been unbelievable uh, with the bat yeah. in his hands. He has yeah. been... Still terrible with the glove in his hands and the throwing of the baseball, comfortably the worst thing he does. But he's our two hitter right now, and he's doing a good job of it. And then Jaron Duran was at 794 before last night's game. I think he's in the 820s after he just hit a double every time he went up. Um, So while the Red Sox offense still will have nights where they'll put up one or zero runs, I believe they've done that 16 times this year. Uh, it's largely because a lot of these guys haven't actually ever played together. Like Devers missed some time. He's been in and out, not a ton. Ref Snyder didn't start the year with the team. Casas obviously hasn't played in a while. Tyler O'Neill, I think is at two separate times he's had to sit. Connor Wong's been your catcher, so that, that hasn't changed. William Bray, you can't come off the IL until I think the 20th. David Hamilton is David Hamilton. Duran's been, I think he's played every game. I think he sat once. So that's why it's like, yeah, if this team can actually field the team, maybe they don't get shut out so fucking often. Okay. This, uh, first of all, where, where we started with them yeah. being better than the Yankees offense? Deeper. Knock it off. Now, you They're, said okay. better. That's not, you said better. Like, you, okay. you said better, number one. First of all, uh, as far as run scored, Boston yeah, ranks yeah. The Yankees okay. rank first. WRC plus the Yankees rank second, Boston ranks twelve. So Boston is they have they have a nice little cute offense. It, it, it's cool. Like I'm not here to shit on them in general, but my my you just said they were a bad team. I, I I first of all I corrected myself, sir. Thank you. I said mediocre. Right. I corrected myself. They are one game over five hundred. I don't feel like I'm speaking out of turn here when I say they're a mediocre team. We're gonna be. 500 the whole year. It's, exactly. It's like, no, so you're a mediocre team. The, exactly. the, worst, the worst thing that happened before this series was that we took two off the Bills because now we're going to go one and two. Like, you guys know that it's you're going two and one, right? Like, anyone who thinks the Yankees are sweeping hasn't been paying attention. I'm aiming for three and no, oh, but I don't think it's going to happen. Won't. Like it, it, it not, I don't think it's going to happen. I think the laws of nature won't allow the, it. The, the Red Sox will win – some bullshit game. Well, not bullshit, but you know what I mean. They'll they'll win some improbable is the better word for it. Game like they, they'll enter the ninth down four to two and they'll somehow win five. Oh, to no, four. Uh, we can't do that. No, like, like they literally cannot win a game like that. This oh, just watch. Just watch. Well, I mean, I know your closer stinks, and we'll get to it. But uh, <laughs> oh, buddy, yeah, we, we'll get to it. We've been right. we've been awful all season in series openers, especially Friday series openers. And we've been fucking the best team in baseball on Sundays. And that one's Stroman versus Cutter Crawford. Tonight's Heel versus Bayo. It's weird because Bayo, to start his career, has been really good against the Yankees. He's pitched 
deep into games. He really hasn't given up a lot of runs. Uh, now, none of those teams had Juan Soto on them, like literally zero of them. So that definitely helps. Uh, but the reason I haven't really freaked out about him yet this year is because I do think he is a big game pitcher. The Red Sox have played in zero big games this year. This would constitute the first quote unquote big game. Um, again, it's, it's June 14th baseball, but you're, you just played <clears throat> between the Yankees and Phillies. Those are the two best teams in the league. As of now, mm-hmm. you just took two out of three off of one of those two teams. If you want, to, if you're going to take win this series, take two out of three off of them. I do think it has to start tonight. I don't think you can drop this game to heel and then win two straight. I don't like you're not winning the Cooper Criswell game. No, no, no offense to Cooper. <laughs> you're, just, you're not winning that game. No faith in Cooper. No. <laughs> <laughs> damn. Fuck no. Damn. I, I was expecting some kind of. Eh, I don't no, no, <laughs> no, actually, no. no, I don't. Even uh, the cutter game, like he was, he only gave up two earns in the Phillies game, and they were both just mammoth blasts by Carl, Kyle Schwarber. I like he's just been so homer happy. If it's warm on Sunday, which I think it projects to be, I don't love cutter in that spot. So, like, if the Yank, the Red Sox are just gonna have to kind of match, and Strowman has been better on the road than at home. Uh, so I don't know. I do think they kind of have to jump on heel. The reason I think they can is he's so fastball heavy. Uh, and we've been sitting on first pitch fastball is kind of the reason they've been, uh, better offensively as of late. I do think they could steal this one, but it's not like they could easily just swing under it and miss every fucking time too. And, That's and, super and Luis is a fly ball pitcher too. Right, and Man, Devers, Devers that. hasn't homered in a while. Like he, he's due. Oh, uh, every, every fucking series, uh, Devers is the goddamn Denzel Washington meme against the Yankees. And I'm leaving here with something. Every series, every series, it don't matter where they play, it don't matter what month, it don't matter how far the Red Sox or the Yankees out of contention. Every time they play, Rafael's gonna leave with something. He's gonna hit a home run, or he's gonna have some massive double uh, late in the game to shift the. He's, he's so fucking. It's great. Uh, so it's – it's. I wish Willier were playing just to give us a little bit more. Obviously, I wish Cas- Casas were playing too. It just has been so long. It's not like he's just got hurt or anything like that. Um, but there is like – Tanner Houck versus Luis Heal is still a decent debate for who's going to start the All-Star game, which I do think is still a big deal. The Red Sox can help Tanner Houck out in a series. He's not going to pitch by <laughs> inflating that heel ERA a little bit. Who who picks the starter? Who picks the starter pitcher for the All-Star game? Is it, is it the manager? I can't remember. Um, well, it ain't the fans. I know that much. Who, no, it's not the fans. The fans have no say in pitching, which I've always thought was weird. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> very weird. Very weird. Like, why, why is that where the line is drawn? I don't understand. Yeah. I've never understood I don't, that. I don't, I, I, I don't know, but – yeah. yeah, I mean, some some guys will like end up pitching the game before the All Star break, so I think it mm-hmm. it kind of sorts itself out. I know there was a push for Mason Miller to get the start because you're not going to go more than an inning or two, anyways. I think that's since cooled down, but yeah, I, I do think it's like the manager, and it's not he's not like picking. Oh, this guy's here. I just like this guy. It's it's typically the right call. I can't remember the last time people were furious oh, yeah, for sure. about who got the start. For sure. And I mean, the Mason Miller thing is interesting because I, I, I mean, we are only pitching one or two innings max. This is usually one. So yeah, why not? If you think right. he's the best pitcher in the American League, why not? Right. Uh, I think I would annoy old baseball fans to no end, but. Like, you're going to get the most people watching to start the game. So, yeah, get them out there. Yeah. You might as well throw the A's up on because of the A's. Throw them something. I feel the A's haven't been, like, terrible this year. Obviously, in, in, in a league where the White Sox play, no one's that terrible. The Red Sox found a way to split with the White Sox because that's just what we do. We're five Did they split club. with them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean I, – I know they lost the first one. I didn't pay attention to the rest of the series because I – I expected them to split. 
Like, no, they won. That's what they do. They won the first one 14 to 2, 14 to 1. And then Crochet pitch game two. Crochet might start the fucking All Star game. He's I was been unbelievable. Just to, I was I was thinking that. <laughs> He's uh, been unbelievable. I, I saw a blurb earlier and we're we're approaching trade deadline season where we go we get the most lukewarm fucking tweets from every insider not named passive. Um Heyman is like <clears throat> the, the the Yankees uh appear to like Garrett Crochet. No shit. Who doesn't? <laughs> who doesn't like Garrett Crochet? It would be who unbelievable if they were like, the Yankees actually think this guy fucking sucks. Like, right. who, who, who doesn't like Garrett Crochet? The, the man has like a 1 5 ERA since the middle of April, bro. Who doesn't like Garrett Crochet? Right. Yeah. Uh, Robert's been on a hot streak too, this, just this last week. Obviously, he hasn't played much this year due to injury. But it seems like two guys, like, someone please come get me. Like, someone for the love please. of God, please come trade for me. And like for a team that bad, the White Sox have actually really good trading pieces. Not like not 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 like ten of them, but like they have sure. Crochet, they have Robert if they want to move him, and they have um, the other pitcher. What's his name? Fetty. Like yeah, Eric Fetty, really good. So like they have three really good trading pieces, which which means only one thing: they're gonna fuck this up. Either they're gonna keep Definitely. them too long, or they're gonna trade them for bullshit. Either now or later, because the White Sox are the White Sox. They. They're they're like a, a worse version of the Blue Jays because at least the Blue Jays have put together a full regular season. The White Sox haven't even done that. And three years ago, it was a three or two years ago, I was picking them to like win the AL because it was like mm-hmm. they've had injuries, but there's so much talent here. It's the Central, which I, I'll never respect. If they can just figure it the fuck out. And then they refuse. They outright refuse to figure it the fuck out. And they've gotten substantially worse every single season. Uh, I know they have a losing record when they have a lead after the sixth. Like, it's just like like things you've never seen. Like, at least the A's, they've got, like, Miguel Andujar doing all sorts of stuff. You know what I mean? They're a watchable team with exciting mm-hmm. young players. Brett Rooker's nice, too. Yep. Rooker, yeah. I mean, they, they always find a starting pitcher or two that they just – make good uh that's that's just been my whole life they're moving and all that shit and they're a disgrace of an organization but they, they haven't been egregiously awful this year oh yeah i mean listen in a league where the white Sox exist like no one is on that level of futility and the the record be them having a losing record when they lead after six is probably the funniest of the white Sox stats because I I wager that they are the only one that that applies to, and like they're not the only bad team; they're just the bad team. Like you know what I mean? They're just the premier bad team. But I imagine that's the only team that that qualifies for. It, you understand how hard it is to continuously lose games, <laughs> bro? That's that's a hard feat to keep fucking doing. It's one thing to lose one run games all the time because that that goes how it goes, and it, it could just be. You know, you were down 2-0 and you cut the lead to one and he lost. Like, stuff like that can happen. When you lead after six, could, and, and I guess with the White Sox it's not regularly, but when you lead enough after six, you're supposed to win those games. And the White Sox was like, no, we don't want to, actually. Thanks. 18 and 52, uh, minus 149 run differential. It's hard to be this bad, bro. And, and the things with the White Sox, like, from a fan perspective – they don't have shit to look forward to. Like, no. obviously, Crochet starts fine. Uh, do we think Crochet is going to be on that team for that long? Because I don't. No. Um, Fetty, Fetty's cool, but I don't think anybody's waiting around the man. Well, he's also watch. like, Fetty would be such a bigger story if it was happening anywhere other than oh, the yeah. White Sox. Like, sure. he was in, he was in Japan or Korea last year. Like, mm-hmm. he wasn't in Major League Baseball at all. He signs in the offseason to not much fanfare. There wasn't, like, some crazy bidding war over him. And he's been very solid. If he had done this for one of our teams, he would be, like, one of the biggest stories in baseball this year. If he was on the Dodgers, he'd be the biggest story in baseball this year. Like, it was not. He's on the White Sox, and people were like, who? Who is Eric? (laughs) Who? Man, the White Sox... And, and the thing is, like all, all of, they, they, we, we were projecting them to be really good based on that core of players that they had, and it wasn't like it was erroneous to project them to be good. All of them, like they were top prospects, top draft picks, whatever. 
And I'm like, bro, none of them ended up good. Like, Eloy stinks. Fucking Andrew Vaughn is even worse. Tim Anderson, I, not there anymore, obviously, but brother, if you look at his Savant page, and I'm not a big Savant page enthusiast like that, but like I check in monthly on his Savant page. You know why? Because somehow it gets worse every month. Blood. And I don't understand how. It, it, it You look up one day, it's like every single percentile is like eight. And then like the next month is like six. It's like, how the fuck does this continue to get worse? <laughs> how? But all of them, like Moncada ended up being, I guess, the best of them. And even he's aggressively yeah. mediocre, right? So it's just, say, yeah. you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, Robert exists. But like besides him. And, and I wasn't even saying he that. Can't like... stay on the field. He can't stay on the field. So the stuff. Moncada's – so I, he's had more success than I remember because he's been injured so goddamn much. But 2019, he had a 4-6 war. 2021, he had a 4 war. Uh, and then he had a 2 war in 2018, which was his age, like, 24 season. He's still not even 30. You know what I mean? He's only played 11 games this year, positive war in those games, but 756 career OPS. This guy – was the number one overall prospect in baseball. You know what I mean? This wasn't like maybe he'll be okay. Like, no, no. Like, at, at Jackson Holiday, the Orioles, every player on the Orioles, uh, that's what he was supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, right. And he just isn't. Like, he, he hasn't been at all. Uh, they gave Benintendi, Benintendi the biggest contract in team history, which is a sense Thank that's you, true. Chicago. Thank you, Chicago. I, I appreciate you for saving the Yankees from, from themselves. Appreciate it. But yeah, Robert, and even Robert, as as great as I think he is, he played 145 games last year. That was his best season. He had a 5-1 war. The season before that, he played 98 games. The season before that, he played 68 games. And in those 68 games, he had a 3-6 war. So yeah, it's like, yeah, this guy, when he plays, is unbelievable. But right now, he's, uh, he's I want to make sure I get, yeah, Cubano, uh, Byron Buxton. I didn't, like, that's, that's what he's been. I, de, as depressing as that comparison is, I cannot, uh, I cannot deny it. Yeah, it's it depressing. sucks. But I, like, you look at this team, you just have no idea how it got. They got Kopech, they got Moncada, and they got someone else in the um, for sale trade, and it's like yeah, you kind of got nothing. Like I forget, I forget what the other piece was. Kopech, Moncada, I can't remember. But I know I know there was a third relatively important piece. And I can't remember what it was. But At yeah, the they, they didn't do much. Uh, Luis Basabe and Victor Diaz. So it really was okay, just Moncada and Kopech. Right. Yeah, that's nuts. But yeah, the White Sox. So we split with them because that's kind of what we do. Um, and then taking two out of three out of the Phillies. I, I heard multiple people be like, well, the Phillies don't have their catcher. And they don't have Trey Turner. Brother, the Red Sox don't have 15 of their fucking players. I don't even hear about who the Phillies do and don't have out there. They threw Nola. They threw Wheeler. They threw Sanchez. They lost two games. It is what it is. Like, teams lose to, to mediocre and bad teams all the time. It's and, I mean, the, the, they've, been, they, they've been beating every they've been beating everybody without those people any fucking Right. So why do I want to hear about that now? Yeah. I mean, well, Rio Mito just went down relatively recently. Um, I don't know or remember when Trey Turner went down. But, yeah, I There's can't no have problem. that. Yeah. You have you have June Schwarber at the dish. You should be winning all of these games when, when it's June. And June Schwarber's the best hitter of all time. I don't care what anybody says. He's absurd in June. It happens every year. I, I don't. The the fucking calendar turns to June, and here comes Kyle Bonds, bro. Every year, <laughs> every year, it's incredible. He was a delight. He was like sad coming back to Fenway, not because he misses it, but he was like, man, what happened here? What? <laughs> What happened here? Well, once proud franchise has now looks like this. Yeah, it's you got all you, you. The fans don't even show up anymore. You got uh, fans of the opposing teams filling out the stadium. It's tough. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if the Yankees can talk about that. It's tough. Of course we can. What you mean? I I thought the Dodgers like won the World Series and listen, to celebrate in listen. New York the way they were parading up and down the fucking streets. Listen. All right. We haven't had that in Boston. The, 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 I mean, you did when the Dodgers were there. Like, the Dodgers they absolutely did not parade down the streets of Boston. I mean, they paraded to the stadium. 
I remember the clip. They did not in Boston. They did. I promise you. They did not. I saw the clip. What you mean? But I've never seen that. But like to address that though, like all right, there was a ton of Dodger fans there all weekend. I'm not here to argue. It was what it was. We saw the parade. It was AI or fake fans. Like, I'm, not, I'm not here to argue that. Like This was not uh, AI-generated images, so I'm not here to argue that at all. Now, the only thing I will push back on, it ultimately it means nothing, but I'll say this. This whole they took over the Bronx, knock it off. You didn't. Knock it off. You were running around with a police escort. Stop. You didn't take over shit. Stop. Knock it off. No, you didn't take over shit. Like, yes, y- y'all show up well. Dodgers fans travel well. I'm not here to take no credit from them in that regard at all. They they showed up well. I was there Friday night, ton of Dodger fans. I showed up like an hour early, and brother, there were so many Dodger fans having photo shoots. So many of them. <laughs> so many of them. So like, hey, I'm not taking nothing away from you. This whole, we took over the Bronx. We took over New York. We took over your space. No, you didn't. You ran around with a cop, with, cop, with, with, with a police escort. Stop. If you ran around with no police escort, I wouldn't be able to say a word. Be like, yeah, you did. You're right. And you just parading up and down. Nobody's saying nothing to y'all with no cops. I wouldn't be able to say nothing. You got it. You didn't take over. What's, the, the, what's that? What's that hatred for the Dodgers though? Like they would be perfectly safe. A parade. They they had a parade <laughs> down the street. Like it's not about hate at that point. It you can't fuck up traffic. I get that. Like, <laughs> like, like yo, you, you fuck out of the down. way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to parade down the fucking street. It doesn't. It, it's the principle at that point. It ain't about we don't hate the Dodgers. Yeah, we don't hate the Dodgers. Sure, there's no reason to. But you have to parade uh, down our street outside our stadium. Nah. Nah. <laughs> absolutely not. No. But they had police. Uh, they had police escorts, and I gotta hear. Well, we took over your city. Like, stop. Well, why do the cops hate the Yankees? I know where this is headed, so let's get to it. Yeah. I know this, I'm not going to answer that bad Why thing. are they protecting the Dodgers? <laughs> why? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, but what was funny is, like, they, they were – I saw from a Dodger fan, they had – there was, like, a flyer that they were handed out on – not handed out um, – that they showed on Instagram where it's like, okay – we're gonna t- uh, we're gonna meet up at Billy's at this time. Well, then you know if we show up at this time, we can make it a Dodgers only bar. This, that, and the fucking third. And they were like, "Oh, we're gonna." Uh, I I talked to whoever owns like the bar next to Billy's, whatever. And he said he was gonna get us a police escort to shut down the street. And I'm like, "Yo, they shut down the street every single home game. Right. All of right. them. Every single home game." It wouldn't it wouldn't be able to function otherwise. So I don't know. No. <laughs> it wouldn't be able to function otherwise. So I have no idea what we're talking about. Where where he told you they're gonna shut it down for you? No, they just shut it down. Period. But yeah, no, nah, they, they took over the brush. It pissed me off. No, you didn't. You had a what, what, what's the Fifty Cent song? Um, you not like me? NYPD, LAPD. Yeah, it's like that's what it was. Stop it. Stop it. But they want to a lot of. I saw a lot of welcome home signs for the Dodgers, which you, you will still find old New Yorkers who like hate baseball because the Dodgers left, which I respect. That's very true. That's very true. You will. Um, and yeah, it does. It is weird. Like even the Giants, their history coming from New York, like it's New York had like nine baseball teams at one point. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> like let's let's settle it down here. We'll pick like two, two of yeah. these guys can stay. Everyone else get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need this much New York City representation. We we really don't. Like we no, don't. it was crazy. Two is enough. It was, it was two genuinely is enough. crazy. All all ten of y'all. Otherwise, y'all got to get the fuck out. Like s- settle it between y'all. Like two can stay, ten can leave. Like you you can figure out which ten st- leave and which two go uh, stay. But it, it can't be this, bro. How old are the Mets? I want to say they're like what, fifty some odd 62. years old. Sixty-two. Sixty-two. Yeah. So they they created the Mets to replace the Dodgers and Giants. It's like, well, <laughs> why did you take both? Why did you take both of them? And boy, what 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 a replacement! Right, like that's the other part of it. <laughs> what a replacement. Uh. Quite a downgrade, if you ask me. But you know, I didn't. I guess I never really thought about how this is going to sound funny, but new the Mets are, like relatively speaking. No, they are. It feels like they've been around longer than that, but they have not. 
Yeah, I mean, any team that was uh, existed by the time my brain turned on when I was like four years old it feels like they've they've, they've, they've been, been here around. forever. <laughs> yeah, I feel like they've been around a while. But the Mets, yeah, sixty-two. I thought they had at least like a hundred years of history. No, nope. maybe not. Just sixty years of crappy history. Yeah, awful. <laughs> Genuinely awful. Sixty-two is crazy. Yeah, let's. We shouldn't have kicked all the teams out. Let's get another one. Brutal. <laughs> Just brutal. The Yankees had like 20 rings by then. Yes, bro. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They did. Yeah. Like, yeah, let's let's start the Mets. Yeah, let's start this expansion team after the Dodgers and, and Giants left. Yeah, let's see how that one goes for us. And well, it's gone how it's gone. I do still wish New York had both Giants. I, I loved when Chris Berman would say the New York football Giants, like it was 50 years after they had moved to San Francisco. And yeah, yeah. they took that from us. Yeah, and they replaced them with the Mets, who, well, at least they have Tom Seaver, right? You know, uh, Mike Piazza. But they've had cool players, like inarguably yeah. cool players. They just yeah. haven't done much with them. That, yeah, exactly. Right, they they have like they had they had Ricky Henderson for a period. I mean, so did the Yankees, but everyone had Ricky Henderson. That that, that's true. <laughs> that doesn't count that, at all. That's true. R- Ricky Henderson and Deion Sanders once playing for the Yankees is still like my favorite fun fact because they're just so in everything that they do. Like you just wouldn't think the Yankees would be like, yeah, let's let's go get those guys. Well, that was at least George. You know what I mean? He did mm-hmm. like the flair and showmanship as long as you kept it on the field. Right, you're doing stuff off the field. You know, you'd be fired today, rehired <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> after you've learned your lesson. Fucking like Dion uh, inside the park home run clip was electric. Oh yeah, I mean Dion was an electric, electric as electric. electric of an athlete. I'm kind of shocked. I mean, he did try and draft Bo Jackson, so uh, George had an incredible eye for talent. I know he had plenty of misses on his resume. Who doesn't when you do it as long as he does? But he had he wanted Bo Jackson and John Elway. Like this guy, <laughs> you would have been quite quite a football team then. But like, yeah, but I mean, like as good of a baseball team too. Elway, I mean, Elway played for the Yankees. He was in their minor league organization, and he dominated, <laughs> absolutely dominated. George knew ball as much as it pains me to say. He absolutely knew ball. Um, and I wish he was in the like the social media era. Oh, that would have been that would have been a disaster if he was. <laughs> that would have been an absolute disaster. Oh, that would have been so bad. Like him, him tweeting after a three game loser streak. Oh my god, that would have been a disaster. That's what I mean. Oh, like Cohen's been... evil. He, the Mets are getting their teeth kicked in. Cohen's like, we got to turn it around. Like way too positive. Steinbrenner would have been like, I'm gonna blow up the stadium tomorrow. If these <laughs> fucking idiots. <laughs> Don't figure it out. If they don't win, you know. If they don't win tomorrow, everybody is jobless. You got to figure it out. That's <laughs> right. not like everybody. The manager, the equipment people, the line chefs, everybody is going. You can figure that shit out on your own. It would be a disaster. What is the buzz in New York for this series? Is it just another series? Just another series. Nobody cares. <laughs> like just, just another series. Like nobody. Like I haven't seen nobody. Like hey, let, let, let's mob out and go to Fenway. I haven't seen that one time. Um, this it's just the Yankees have forty nine wins out of whatever seventy one games, however many they played. Just keep stacking wins. Keep winning series. That's the only concern at this point. Yeah, they went two out of three against the Royals. Three out of four. Uh, oh, same thing. Uh, three out of four against the Royals. Lost the last one on what a walk off? Yes. Why did that happen? All right. So Clay Holmes blew the save. Um, first of all, it started wow. with a, a ground ball that both him and Rizzo basically botched. Like nobody charged the ball, and then Rizzo ended up getting the ball late, and then homeboy said the first. Uh, Clay had somebody else struck out. They called it a ball. He got a he got on base, and then you know, as with with Clay Holmes, the frustrating thing about Clay Holmes is this. And I get it. I'm about to compare two losing situations. I'd much rather like, like we're going into the ninth inning up three to two, in general, up one run, whatever. 
I'd much rather if, I, if we're going to lose, I'd much rather lose in two minutes than 12. But that's the thing. I, I'd much rather you just say, all right, um, Michael Garcia got on base and Bobby Witt hit the ball 500 feet. I'd much rather just lose that way as opposed to the death by a million cuts. Sure. So that ended up happening. And then, as usual, Clay Holmes can't blow a save without it just being DEFCON 5 on Yankee Twitter. And it's and I think I, I think I ran into the stupidest logic I have seen this year. And okay. I, it's, um, you know, the Yankees, the Yankees needing bat misses in the bullpen in a vacuum, fine opinion. They probably do. Cool. The Yankees need bat, a bat misser to be the closer. Clay Holmes would be better as the setup man. It's the single stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. Why I say that? Bro, the eighth inning guy and the ninth inning guy have the same fucking job. It's just one of doing it in the ninth inning. They have the same, their, their job is to get outs in critical situations and prevent the other team from fucking scoring or prevent the other team from tying the game how, or taking the lead, however you want to put that. Clay Holmes, you, you don't like Clay Holmes as a ninth inning guy because um, he's a weak contact specialist. Okay, that's your prerogative. I think it's stupid given the results, but he has a 1.7 ERA. He has one bad game every six weeks, and we have to do this every single fucking time he has a bad game. Fine. You don't like Clay for whatever your reasons are. Okay, bro, cool. Guess what? There are not many that are better than him. And, like, 2022 Edwin Diaz is not available. So I, I'm not sure what you're going to get that's going to bump Clay Holmes to, out of his job into an eighth inning role. And, and guess what? In, in a lot of cases, the eighth inning guy has the more difficult job. It depends on what part of the lineup is coming up. Sure. Like if the three, four, five is coming up as opposed to the eight, nine, one, yeah, the eighth inning guy has the more difficult job. That's why some managers put their their closer, who happens to be their best pitcher, in during the eighth inning. But it's just impossibly stupid fucking logic. Because Clay Holmes not going to fucking change fundamentally as a pitcher if he pitches in the eighth inning instead. He's not. It's the same shit. You're doing the same shit. And when he blows the game in the eighth, and blows the game in the eighth inning, you're going to be every bit as frustrated. You know how I know how that's the case? We've lived it already. A right. Rodas Chapman misses plenty of fucking bats. Everybody hated him too. Now there are good reasons for that, but I digress. Clay Holmes set up for a Rodas Chapman, and people were frustrated about that too. So it's just you don't like Clay Holmes. I'd rather you just say that as opposed to um, giving me the most idiotic fucking logic ever. Like we need a real closer if we're gonna win. Who the fuck is a real closer if Clay Holmes is not one? How many real closers are there in baseball? What Emmanuel Class say? Who else? Mason Miller. Uh, all right, call the A's about Mason Miller and, and report back to me what, what they're gonna ask for. It's like, hey man, Spencer Jones got to start this, and then you hang up the phone. Do you? Yes, one thousand percent. Yes. The, the Yankees have been dragging good relievers out of bodegas for 30 fucking years. No, no, I, I, we're years. not talking good relievers, though. We're talking elite closers. There's a difference between good and Clay Holmes is an elite closer, and they got him for me and you. Sure. He's not as right. good as Mason Miller. Nobody is. Understood. That's what I mean. That's Nobody why is. I, I, yeah, I'm not, I would hang up the phone. Trading what it would take to get Mason Miller would be a poor use of resources for the Yankees. Given what they are good at, it'd be a poor use of resources. Like, Why? you're probably you... deep enough to be given top prospects for a fucking close. I don't care who he is. No, but Mason Miller has plenty of control left, unless I'm just wildly wrong about that. I'm pretty no, sure he does. I'm that. assuming this would be a second-year team control. So I'm assuming he has four more years. Right. So it's like that's part of it. And even last year, I believe they were still trying to use him as a starter. I don't think it would be crazy to get him into your pitching factory for Spencer Jones when – we're talking about where does Dominguez play? Well, Spencer Jones, that, that's where it would start, I'm assuming. Sure, but I also, Spencer like, Jones, yeah. this, I, this is my least favorite part about, especially baseball trades, more than any other sport. Football doesn't really have trades. Basketball trades never make any fucking sense. <laughs> baseball <laughs> trades, yeah. it's always, oh, you think that package will get it done? No, you're going to give your top three prospects. And then a worse package than the original one talked about is the one that ends up getting accepted. You have no idea what these fucking GMs are thinking. You certainly don't know what the A's are thinking. They've turned really good players into dog shit repeatedly. Fair. They've loaded up the Braves for nothing in return. Like absolutely <laughs> zero came back in return. They traded a catcher for a worse catcher. 
That was their whole thing. Do. Like that's they exactly do. what they do. they do. So I like Christian yeah. Poche was like the second piece, and he's on like three different teams since he got to the A's. <laughs> they, they, they did. Like I don't even think it would cost Spencer Jones. Truth be told, like I, I get that's what you have to say so that people don't think you're crazy online because people don't like nuance and context. The A's absolutely would not take a lot for me. Like whatever they get will be grossly underwhelming for sure. I understand that perspective because the A's history, the A's recent history shows us that. Because obviously the Matt Olson trade happened. The Matt Olson trade and the, and the Sean Murphy trade were separate trades, right? Yeah, they were separate, separate years. Separate yeah, years. <laughs> yeah. So like both of those trades happened, and I can't name a single difference maker they got from either trade. Not one. I can't name one. Like Christian Pache came on one of those trades. He's been on 18 teams since. Um, like, they got. Shay Langoliers, who's okay, I guess. And then, He's like, fine. who else? The center not, fielder not... who was like, God, they sent down earlier this year. I can't oh, remember Ruiz. his name. Ruiz. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they got him via Milwaukee, even because it was they that did. weird three team trade. So they that, did. yeah, Estra Ruiz. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's been good, obviously. I think he lead the league in steals last year, at least the AL. Um, yeah, he was one of the leaders at that minimum. But. Yeah. So you trade for like uh, everyday Terrence score, like sick dude, like awesome. Like what are you, what are you talking about? Like this, they didn't get anything for like obviously they didn't trade all these guys, but they had Tejada, they had Chavez, they had Hudson, they had like they've had better pitchers than Mason Miller. They got shit for them. Listen, if you could get Mason Miller for a B minus package, you do it. That's it. Like, if, I, I'm not saying to never trade from Mason Miller. I am just simply assuming that the A's are sensible enough to ask the Yankees for their top prospects. And part part of this is, like, I know some of the stuff behind the scenes about how the Matt Olson stuff went down. Right. And given what they got, it's really funny to me that they were they, they were asking the Yankees to, um, to empty their pockets. That's really funny to me, given what they actually received from him. They was like, hey, man, it starts with Dominguez. Like, we, we, we talking about Volpe. We talking about, like, oh, look at what you got. What the fuck you mean? I got I to gotta come off. I got to come off my fucking top prospects, and you gave them away for that shit that you got? But, yeah, if, 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 if he comes for a B-minus package, fine, bro. But, then, yeah. Trade for him, but I, I just feel that he won't. Uh, Will Warren, congrats! You are uh, an Oakland Athletic. Uh, Roderick Arias, the uh, nineteen-year-old in single A, you're going. Uh, let's see, who's like a twenty-five-year-old t- catcher for a baseman? Part Ben Rice, you are a Oakland Athletic. That's the package right there. Uh, they can leave Ben Rice alone. He's straight. But he can have you wouldn't else. trade Ben Rice for Mason Miller? I mean, the, the Yankees kind of don't have another first baseman. So, or another potential first baseman in this case. Play fucking Spencer Jones at first. Who gives a shit? Have you seen his defense? I'm not, I'm not trying to move him out of the outfield. Play Judge at first. Like, what, what are we Fair. talking about? Fair. That, that eventually, that's <laughs> eventually that's what's going to be anyway. So fair. Yeah. Fair. I mean. Yeah, that's. But yeah, man. Listen, I, I would I wouldn't shed any tears if the Yankees traded for Mason Miller, assuming the package was reasonable. But like okay. the Clay Holmes takes drive me insane. Like I don't like he'd be better in the eighth inning. Why? He's doing the same job. Why? Listen, it's it's when eighteen when the Red Sox won hundred and eight games, all people could talk about was the bullpen and how that was going to be their downfall, and that Kimbrough wasn't good enough, and this, that, and the third. It, bullpens are so finicky, and it's not even a year to year thing. It's it's a appearance to week appearance, to week, <laughs> day to day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah like it can fall apart day to day. Yes, it can it can snap into place. It can fuck you for sure. I'm not trying to say like everything will be fine. But also, like, if they aren't going to go outside of the organization, is it Rock Marciano? Like, who's going to be closing for this goddamn team? Clay Holmes. Like, they're not. No, what I'm saying, it, obviously, the team isn't thinking about making it right. Change. Oh yeah, no. no I mean, if if they, but that, that's the thing. Even if you want to say, all right, go outside the organization, get somebody to replace Clay, and then move Clay to the who? 
Who? Who the fuck are you going to? Who? Ken Lee. The, the dudes who you think are better are not available. Did you just say Ken Lee? I'm thinking closers who are going to be made available. I'm, oh. I didn't say he's. I'm just. Oh. That's all I'm answering. Oh, okay, fair. Um, yeah, but who's better? Like class A is not a it's likely. Well, not likely. No, he ain't, not this year. He ain't going nowhere. Okay. No. Uh, Mason Miller. We just had that talk. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. Who? Like Josh Hader? You trying to pay that contract? I'm not. You could. Like, you could maybe get, and I'm not even saying to close, but you could maybe call up the Cubs and get one of Neris or Alice, uh, Azalea. Obviously, Azalea's. Uh, I mean, they tried to sign Neris in the offseason. So I like, know, that would make some sense. Day. Azalea, so three days ago, he was still playing catch. So, all right, he could come back. Uh, I've seen Estevez from the Angels. Uh, they're trying to move him. He's. Just not particularly good. He is, he does miss bats. His whiff rate's been solid all year, uh, but when it it connects with a bat, it's just like an auto loss. So that's <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that. No, thank you. Uh, Hard pass. Where where are the Diamondbacks in the standings? That's what I want to see. Because they, if I you could get five hundred. Yeah, I mean, most of the league is uh, 33 and 36. So if you could get um, like Genko, who was nails in the playoffs last year, but he's also like they tried to give him the closer job this year. He was not good at it. it uh, he would be like just your eighth inning guy where he does flourish, but that's the kind that would be the moves I'd be looking to make, not necessarily. Let me go get like a another closer. There's one guy on, on the Diamondbacks I wanted. His name is Christian Walker. Bring me Christian Walker, please and thank you. Yeah, I mean, I could understandably you have the worst first baseman in baseball. Are you sure? Boy, we sure fucking do. Oh god, it's so bad. If you want to win a World Series, you'll trade for Jock Peterson. That's just kind of what he does. He locks in. <laughs> I mean, can he play first? Probably. We talked Kyle Schwarber how to play in the middle of the season. Like, it's not a hard position. Fair. No offense to the first baseman out there, but as someone who got tasked with that a lot growing up, just due to my size, they don't really give a fuck who plays first. No <laughs> one <laughs> yeah, I who mean, first. I've never cared that much about who my first baseman is, to be honest. Like, the only time I ever really cared was when they went from uh, Giambi to to Teixeira. To, to I was gonna talk about, and, and the only reason was like one weekend. I'm like, wow, what a stark difference with the with the glove. And like if they had just kept running out Giambi, like I wouldn't have cared. Like, All right, man, come yeah. on. But like they they went to, I'm like, oh wow, this is what good first base defense. It's been so long since I've seen it. This is crazy. But the the Teixeira signing, yeah, might have been 18. There was plenty of juice in the Red Sox Yankees game. Both teams won 100 games. They wanted to fight every time they saw each other. Mm. Oh, so yeah. a lot of people say, like, oh, oh, 4 ended it. And that's not really true. Like, when both teams have been World Series aspirations at the same time, they get back to hating each other. Those just haven't aligned a ton uh, over the like, last 15 years. Like, 4 was the apex, for sure. But like, For sure, yeah. I'm not – I'm not one's never going to get back that to that. But, like, it's – it's been fine when both teams have been contending at the same time, as you said. But, like, also, I feel like the rivalry is dulled a little bit because, like, the characters are boring now on both sides. Like, Pedro Martinez is, is, is out here hitting people on purpose, throwing old people to the ground. You know, like, man, you defending like, himself. Like, I, I, I didn't say he was wrong. I just I named the act. The way you act framed it was very uh, NYPD. We, 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 all right, all right. First, all right, let's cop Brown out. man throws elderly <laughs> white to the ground, is <laughs> what you said. Listen, did he not throw old man to the ground? I didn't frame it any time. Throw, I, I don't agree ground. with the word throw. Oh, laid out of the way of a charging lunatic is how I uh, uh, Charging lunatic is crazy. Okay, what else laid, would you describe? He laid him gently on the ground. Then, all right, is, is that is that better? That's what happened. He laid him gently. I, on again, the that's putting too much. If I were a lawyer right now, you're you're my client, Mr. Martinez. Uh, did no such laying that you speak of. That didn't happen. Okay, that that okay. Um, he did what he did. He defended himself. 
Let's go with that. All right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, Manny Ramirez was out here overreacting to pitches nowhere near his head. Nearly killed him. I... <laughs> like, no, <laughs> nowhere near his head. Like, nowhere near. He's over, he's overreacting. David Ortiz mostly just killed the Yankees. So that's just how that was. Uh, we hated him. He hated us. It was colorful in that way. Like, Mookie Betts is great. Mookie Betts is amazing. Mookie Betts is – he's just happy to be there. Man. He's happy to play baseball. There's no hate coming from Mookie Betts. That's just not how this works. Like, when, when – who else was on that team? Oh, Devers was there. Devers just he just mashes baseballs and goes home. That's his. That's his. Eighteen. Yeah, was Devers on the team? He was right. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, so Devers is there. Was there. JD Bogarts was just there. doesn't say much. He just goes out there. He plays baseball. He goes home. I yeah. Chris Sale. He's known to throw a temper tantrum every now and again and gets injured in weird ways. That's all with Chris Sale. Like, there's no like, oh yeah, we hate this guy. He does. Yeah, that. Joe Kelly. Right, and, and Joe Kelly's just a dickhead. Everybody hates Joe Kelly. Yeah, so, relax. He is. Everybody hates Joe yeah. Kelly. Joe Kelly's a great guy. If nothing I, I bet, I bet you think so. But, yeah, he – every most people dislike Joe Kelly. So there's that. But, yeah, there's no there, – there, there's no actual angst between the two teams on an individual level. So that's where here where if both teams aren't contending, like one of them isn't – like you, this is what you're going to get. It's going to be just, hey, another series on the calendar. Yeah, which sucks. Um, it does. That's also, again, going to be not heavily paid attention to, at least tonight, in, in one of these two cities. Uh, <laughs> yeah, to say the least. We have more important things to do, uh, much more important things to do. And yes, Saturday and Sunday, I'll be locked the fuck in. Uh, tonight, I just want Bayo to. I just want Bayo to pitch well. I don't really give a fuck about the result. I just want Bayo to pitch well. However, the Red Sox are currently two games back of a playoff spot. We're in the middle of June. It is time to start looking at shit like that. They're not like the the whole league's just so mediocre. It's the Twins who are ahead of us. I like Royce Lewis is back, so that gives them. A home run a game, uh, <laughs> which is just what he does. He's so good. I'm like, his pace has to be higher than Judge's pace just because he's only played like seven games and he's hit six home runs. You know, what I, mean? it has to <laughs> no, be. I bet it is. Like, I, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I bet it is. Like, he hits a home run every fucking game, dude. Like, he doesn't crazy. relax. He doesn't relax. Uh, he's, he's really good. It's been a weirdly good Correa season, too. Like, this is what I mean. The Twins do all these things, no one cares. No one gives a fuck. Uh, <laughs> you know, especially not uh, if you root for the New York Yankees. You damn sure don't care. Nobody cares. No, and it's like it, like East Coast buys the set and third. The Twins, they won one playoff series the last 20 years. Like, that's what it is. And it's nothing to do with the bias. They were coming in and uh, dominating every uh, October. People would be all, people would respect the Twins. There's no reason to respect the Twins. Yeah, they lay down every October. Nobody cares. So don't even give them the play. Like, I think they should be banned from postseason contention this year. I, I disagree. If it can set up Red Sox, Yankees, because you're still afraid of the Red Sox, no matter who is on the team. That's an insane way to frame this. Afraid? You would much rather play and, and lose to the Twins than play the Red Sox. I mean, yeah, I'd much rather play the Twins. Like, I'm not arguing. I'd, I'd much rather play the Twins than anybody else. No shit. Yeah. I, I no, but I'm know. saying, like, guaranteed series loss against the Twins. You'd rather sign up for that than an unknown against the Red Sox. No. That's false. Absolutely not. A guaranteed series L or play the Red Sox? Yeah, I'll take I'll take the 50-50 shot. I move on my day. But yeah, if they lose to the Red Sox, that would fucking stink. Like, I'm not here to yeah, argue. Way that worse. All. It would be way worse. worse. But like I, after 2004, it doesn't get worse. It don't get worse. I don't know. We kind of beat you. Was that two years ago uh, when Aaron Boone was still playing 04 highlights? Like I, I don't know that it doesn't not get worse. I mean, no, that was he was doing that for the Astro series, but. I know it was, but we still like I count that as a series win for the Red Sox. No, oh, stop, stop, stop it! But we won that series. Stop. That's a fact. 
the you the Red Sox didn't play in that series, sir. But yeah, I I I take the fifty fifty shot with the Red Sox, and nobody is scared of the fucking Red Sox. Nobody, not oh, me. At least. I, I can't speak about. It. I can't speak for anything. nobody's scared of the Red Sox. Garrett Cole's scared of the Red Sox. No, 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 no. Let's characterize this the right way. He's scared of that man that wears 11. That's Mm. it. That's it. We've gone through his postseason numbers. He is better against everyone else, and then the Red Sox, he just shits his pants. Because Devers didn't tag him in that that wild card game. It was Xander and Kyle. Yeah, he was awful. Everybody else did. Yes, correct. Um. Well, come see us then. Get to the playoffs. Get to the That's the goal. And we'll see what happens. This team, the, it, the Red Sox beating this, like this specific Red Sox team, beating this specific Yankees team in the playoffs would be almost more inexplicable than 04. Like 04, those teams were on the level. Like they were pretty even. That's what made the game so good. These That's teams are not I, I even. Think, I think the worst team won both of those series. Like 03 and 04. Like, I think the worst team won both of those series. Like, I think the Red Sox were better than them in 03 and they lost. And then obviously, I think the Yankees were better than the Red Sox in 04 and lost. But it went how it went. I don't know. We were using like Tim Wakefield as a closer and shit. Like, we had a closer in 04. <laughs> yeah, but like 03's lineup was outrageously good. I mean, so was 04. It's like not here to argue. Right. Like, we brought back everybody. Yeah, 03's was slightly better. So, but nobody's scared of Red Sox, man. Stop that. Again, not I mean, today, not June fourteenth, October fourteenth. Yeah, you would rather see anyone else. It's not true. All right, I'd rather see the Red Sox than whoever wins the West. I guess. Yeah, let's assume Seattle wins the West. Seattle's Seattle's a team I really just don't. I don't want no parts of, bro. Not gonna lie to you. They fucking can't score. What are you talking about? I'm a, let me clarify. I'm assuming that they do something at the deadline with the bats. I'm assuming. If they don't, then sure, bring them on because they can't fucking score, as you said. But if, like, if they acquire a bat or two that actually can hit, because I've, I've seen what they've done the last few years as far as uh, deadline acquisitions, and it never works for them. But if they no, figure no. out how to cobble together an average lineup, like I don't really want to see those dudes, especially in a short series. I don't want to see them. Like they're forty and thirty-one, they're plus eleven run differential. Red Sox plus thirty-five. Correct. We split with them when we played them. Like we're better than the Mariners this year. Yeah, the, the Mariners' offense is dog shit. We were, we were, we were their pitching isn't really better. I'm looking at the runs they've allowed. It's not like that's closer than the run scored is. Sure, but like they have. What four really good starting pitchers? Five, maybe. Like I don't yeah, three or I don't, four. I don't want to see those dudes. If 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 they fix fix or like reasonably fix their offense to get it to league average, I don't I don't want to see them dudes. Yeah, I mean, sure. But bring me everybody else. I mean, That's but, well, I'm not exactly excited to see Baltimore, but. Whatever. I'll Again, you'd much rather see Baltimore than the Red Sox. But these these Orioles, as talented as they are, they have literally zero winning percentage in the play in the playoffs. Like that's just the they, facts. They do. They, they do. But um, Boston, I mean, we'll see. I I I, I hope we get to see that. Hope, Same, because I think that would just be very funny. I hope, I hope we get to see, it. and then once the Yankees win, I could come on and I could talk my talk. Again, it's been twenty one years since you've been able to say that. But they've been in the playoffs twice since, right? Uh, it was 04 and it was 18 and it was 21. Man, 21 don't count. Why? Because Cole shit himself and no, it's Sam one, it's, it's not a real playoffs. It's one game, man. That's game 163. That, that don't count. Our fault. You guys choked down the stretch and didn't get that game in Yankee Stadium. Our bad. Whoops. Listen, I, don't get me wrong. The Yankees did put themselves in that situation, clearly, obviously. Yeah. But it was game one sixty. That was no sad. Okay. No, but jokes aside. Yeah, they've met in the playoffs three times since. Come see us. 
it'll be different this time around. Come see us. We're not the ones hiding. We're just <laughs> painfully <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> We're not hiding. We just have the moment can't do anything about. This. Yeah, like I, we got <laughs> we got a flat tire. Our engines overheating. Like that. Those are the problems. Uh, we're all, we're trying to get there, you know. What I mean, like, <laughs> not for a lack of want. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Shout out Wick Browsbeck. I said this yesterday on Section Ten. I'll say it again here today. Wick Browsbeck. Do you know his net worth? Do you know who it is? I don't know who Rick. Were, but uh, Celtics main yeah. owner, governor, whatever the fuck they call themselves now. Okay. Do you know his net worth? No. $400 million, according to Google, so give or take however much. Pretty low for an owner of a professional sports team, let alone the Boston Celtics. <laughs> yes. You know John Henry's net worth? A billy. $5.1 billion. <laughs> <laughs> Wick Rosbeck, again, the $400 million man, I don't say that as a shot, but the $400 million man, has already pledged Jalen Brown four hundred and twenty million career dollars. So he's paying Jalen Brown over the length of all of his contracts more money than he himself has. And John Henry's out here like, eh, who cares about the World Series? Like you can't even who, who gives a fucking shit? And it's like if you don't shut your fucking mouth, dude, if you don't shut the Bro. fuck up, you're Bro, getting his, circles run around you in your own city. His commentary from whatever last week, two weeks ago, whatever it was, and he was like, it basically, oh, you guys have unrealistic expectations. Listen, I'm not gonna pretend like I am involved that, that way in Red Sox fan business and how they operate themselves. Based on the little I've seen, it seems like all they're asking is, hey John, can you just give a fuck, please? That's all we're asking. Just give a fuck. That's that's what it seems like to me. Uh, like, oh, you guys are spoiled by World Series championships. First of all, yeah, duh. Like, that's how this works. <laughs> yes. Like, yeah, when you win, what, three, four, however many? Four. Boston, four. Like, yeah, you're spoiled by that. And you, 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 but there's a level of entitlement that comes with that. Like, not even like entitlement as far as winning the championship, entitlement as far as we expect to, we expect ownership to want to win a championship every year and compete sure. as such. It's not realistic. You're going to have down periods, blah, 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 whatever. Cool. But it's saying that they have unrealistic expectations because they're basically like it's begging you to A, care, and B, sink money into the fucking team that they want you to care about is fucking insane. And what are we doing here? Yeah, it's like 21 was like the perfect storm because they, they were aggress- quote-unquote aggressive at the deadline. They went out and got Schwarber. Yep. And they made this ALCS run just be in the mix. Like, I don't care if it's one wild card team, three wild card teams. There's no excuse for them to be so far away from that. Like, we're sitting here right now. They're two games back. After this weekend, they could be like four or five games back with another team in front of them. Right. Uh, so that's where it's like, what are you talking Like, there are six playoff spots now for the American League. You're finishing last in your division every year. Those are not the – like. It's just gaslighting at this point. The expectations aren't World Series or bust for any team right now other than the Dodgers. Like, the Yankees for sure feel like, let's win a championship. But at least, they're like, they went out and got Soto, and they've been one of the two best teams in baseball this year. Yeah. Philly is very similarly. They're not World Series or bust. They're, they're along for the ride. They love the squad. Of course, they want to win the World Series. They're not dumbasses. Right. But that's not like the expectation. They're in the mix. You get to the postseason, you don't know what's going to happen. The Red Sox, more than any team, should understand that. And they're like, we don't even really necessarily want to get to the postseason. And it's, it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Dude? Like, <laughs> what, what do you mean? How dare you expect me to sink money in the baseball team that I love? What? Like, what? What? He said it was like a one in thirty shot to even win it, and that's just not true. That's, not, like even, that's not even true, bro. Zero percent shot this year. You know what I mean? Like, there you can bro, go 30, through. Three teams don't make the fucking playoffs. Number one, we can start with that. Thirty teams for don't starters. Make the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, number two, like yeah, the White Sox exist. Um, the Marlins exist. Other bad teams, lots of bad teams in Major League Baseball right now currently exist. So no, it's not a one in thirty shot. 
And guess what? No. Even if it was, let's pre- let's pretend for argument's sake that that stupid ass comment is true, right? Again, they're just asking you to try. They're not asking you to reinvent the wheel. They're not asking you to do. They're not asking you to run five hundred million dollar payroll. Nobody's asking you for that. They're no. just asking you, hey, try. Because guess what, man? In baseball, all the t- I mean, shit. The the Diamondbacks made the fucking World Series last year, right? As much as I have a problem with the expanded playoffs, a big problem, and as we get closer to the, to the deadline, it's going to come up every single week because the that sure. ruined the fucking deadline, the trade deadline. Because uh, now everybody makes the fucking playoffs, so everybody thinks, hey, man, we're, we're just a hop, skip, and a jump away from being the Diamondbacks. And I can't even fucking fault them for it because it's true. It's well, baseball. The Braves, when they won it a couple of years ago, like, Right. Yeah, and teams can sell themselves on anything. Right. It's been like, oh, we're one game out. Like, oh yeah, it doesn't matter. We're eight games under five hundred. We're one game out. You know what I mean? Like that. That. That's what it is. Right. But like, yeah, one out of three. Let's let's pretend that bullshit is fucking true, dude. They just ask you to try. Just try. Yeah. That's it. Fold the franchise if it's so fucking impossible. Like, you like, what are you talking like, about, dude? Like, sell it. What? Like, sell it. Nobody's asking you to run. They're not asking you to be the Dodgers. Like they're not, they're no. not asking you to run three hundred million dollar payroll. They're not asking you to do none of that shit. They're asking you to sink money into the team. That's it. Yeah, I would be thrilled with like a plan that gets executed from the front office because we haven't had that really. Like Sherrington, and that's not. I'm not skipping over Don Browski intentionally, but his plan has always been: let's just spend as much money as possible. We'll trade all these prospects and get the best arm available like that's a strategy it's not a sustainable strategy and nor do i care nor does he care like it, it, it's worked for him jarrington was like i'm not trading xander and mookie bets for cole hamels dude. Like, i'm not gonna do that i don't <laughs> care how fired i get for doing that i'm not doing that silly shit and thank god you know what i mean like he was like yeah this will win me the, the headlines today if I trade Xander Bogarts for Matt Harvey, people will be happy today and then be miserable for the next decade. So, yeah, I'm not going to do that. We haven't had, like, a plan executed to that extent in over a decade. And that's where it's just like, well, what the fuck? That's the whiplash people have. That's like trading Mookie Betts was such a foreign concept. Like, what do you mean? Like, he's not – it's not like a Nomar situation where you just hope and pray and he keeps getting hurt and he already had a long career. No. The guy in the middle of his prime who got a contract like substantially less than Jalen Brown for a longer period of time. And you have your, your poorest cash, poorest owner in town, just like, you know what? I'm going to sign Tatum to a larger deal on top of that. I'm going to give these two guys a billion dollars when it's all said and done. And I've never even, like I, I'm not even halfway to a billion myself. And John Henry's like, I just can't. We can't. Uh, you justify. want me to pay? You want me to pay Teoscar Hernandez twenty million dollars for two years? You're insane. Like, that's basically that's basically what he's telling you. Crazy, crazy, disrespectful, crazy, and it's made like as much as I'm gonna talk shit about the rest of the world uh, when the Celtics win eighteen. Like I have plenty of smoke for people locally too because people have been stupid uh, far and wide. I'm gonna connect dots. People don't even see coming. Like, and John Henry's near the top of the fucking list for being an <laughs> idiot. That's like the one good thing that could come from the Celtics, Woody. Is oh, you so much good thing. No, for me, I can't speak for me. I don't. I, I, I guess I'm happy for Jason Tatum. Whatever. But besides that, like I don't. You could keep the rest of this. Happy for Al Horford. Happy for. I'll be happy if Al Horford retires. Al, I don't know what he's going to do. Uh, he's got one more year left on his deal. When he signed the deal, it was the maximum amount of years they could give him, and he said he would have signed for more. I don't know. I don't know what Al Horford's going to do. I'm just tired of rooting against Al Horford, man. I'm very like, – like not, not because I like him, just because it's such a fool's errand. He's just really annoying to root against because he does everything right. And, like, when, when he gets that wide open three, you just know, like, oh. I don't know why you would hate a good, good Dominican father like Al Horford. A good Dominican father. That's not oxymoronic? Wow. Wow. More racism from Kevin Build the Wall Lewis. 
uh, <laughs> disgraceful. Disgraceful. You're, I, I'm going to send these clips. You you slander Pedro's good name. Now you're chirping Al Horford. I hope Soto sees this. <laughs> yeah, send, 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 send the clips. We'll, we'll get some new viewership. Might not be might, might not be people I like, but we'll get some new viewership. Yeah, Juan Soto is not going to like it. He's going to demand a trade. That's how this is going to go. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm so sure. He, I'm so sure he's going to let uh, he's going to let Kevin Lewis uh, Kevin Lewis's commentary about Dominican Father stop him. He may. He won't. He's going to be here for life. I don't know. Can't wait till Brian Bayer rings him up on three pitches tonight, and then Judge probably hits one 750 feet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll see everybody next week. Go Yankees.